Okay. <clears throat> see if this actually works. Sorry, guys, for the delay. Um, having some technical difficulties. I have to make sure that there's some volume and you can hear me. We have Jeremy on the other side of us, so you have to listen to him sometimes. Yes. <laughs> All right, here. It's been a long time since I've set this up. It's been a long time since I've set this up. Oh, there we go. It's been a long time since I've set this up. Oh, there we go. It's been a long time since I've set this up. Oh, there we go. It's been a long time since I've set this up. Oh, there we go. It's been a long time since I've set this up. Oh, there we go. It's been a long time since I've set this up. That's awesome. Okay, let's take a look at what we're going to do today. Boom, boom, boom. Have some fun. Play with some robots. I'm going to have a beer. Jeremy's playing some music to put me to sleep. He uh, super he found yeah super, some super chill music, but unfortunately it is more chill than I was expecting. <laughs> now it's like it sounds like the music you'd hear in the credits after watching a movie. <laughs> it's called Royalty Free Soundtrack Library Volume Two. Hmm. Various artists. Okay, let's take a quick look at what we're going to be doing today. Dun, dun, dun. If I can move these windows around. Come on, DJ. You can, you can use a mouse, right? That's it. boy. Cool. All right, chat's online too, guys, if you have any questions or you want to talk about some of the things we're going to do. Um, so this is what I said we're going to do today. So it is last minute. I wasn't expecting to do a live hack because I've been pretty busy with a bunch of other stuff. <clears throat> so this is just going to be mostly hanging out with you and Jeremy as well because he's building a flower pot or something. <laughs> so so uh, here's some of the things that I would like to do today. I know that the ESP32 cam has been a big topic lately because it's, uh, well, it's new hardware. It's kind of neat. It's like, what, five bucks or something, right? Wi-Fi. And we're having some issues getting the servos to work with the camera at the same time. Now, I haven't played with it. I haven't tried it. I know that Nink and a number of others, you know, Easy Yang, a number of other people have been um, playing with it to understand you know, what the limitations are with the camera running and the digital I.O. at the same time. So we'll play with that and see what we can come up with. Uh, the other thing, too, is I'd like to play with the Intel 265 and the Navigator and put it on one of my telepresence robots. I think it would be really fun to do because I have this one telepresence robot I'm always using, the Omni Labs, and I thought it'd be nice to put the Intel two sticks to T two six five on there, and then teach it some waypoints around the office, so I can say, you know, bring the robot to a different office or bring it to a different location in the office, and that would be fun to do, because we do have a uh, a charging base station, so we can always ha have it home. And then we're gonna try. Maybe I'll do this one first after the ESP thirty two, but I want the Rock Pi X. I have. Let me show you on the camera here. This, this is a five volt um, DC to DC converter. And I talked about these in the forum a few times. You, you can find these at automotive stores and they're mostly made for um, motors that, like small engines uh, that have um, stators inside of them or statters, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but essentially it, it generates power to charge the, uh, the battery from the flywheel and they'll produce the voltage all over the place so you see these a lot though this is sometimes they'll have a, a rectifier built in so it'll take the the ac current and convert to dc but this one will take eight volts to 40 volts and it'll convert it to uh, five volts okay um but it's interesting because it says i don't know if you can see this but it does say eight here let me make the uh 
make it bigger for you to see. There we go. That's what we're looking at. So it'll do um, 12 volts to 24, but then for some reason it says 8 volts to 40 volts. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe Jeremy has some, some insight on why they would give two different voltage numbers. And then our output is always 5 volts, and it's at 5 amps. So I should be able to power um, the Rock Pi or even Atomic Pi or any, any of our Latte Panda upboard, all those type of things, off something like this. And you can get these on Amazon. I got this one on Amazon. I think it was like $10 Canadian or 8 bucks Canadian. So in U.S., that's like 35 cents. <laughs> So um, these are, we'll see if it works, right? So I'll test this out first today. We'll do that. And I think that's probably all we're going to do. There's lots of stuff we can do. We'll just play it by ear and see how the, the day goes. I have a manual focus on this camera so that I don't have to screw around with autofocusing anymore. So every now and then you'll have to see my fingers come up. Um, I do have this. I have to eventually f finish. This is the uh, TurtleBot um, from Robotis. It's uh, called the Burger, is that right? TurtleBot Burger? No, I think, well, Waffle or Burger, one of the two. This, yeah, this is the Waffle. I think the other one's the Burger, the tall. Yeah, there's a more stacked one that's called the Burger. Now, there's, I mean, it's neat. It's just a bunch of plastic with two servos. And they give you uh, the OpenCR um, controller board here, the servo board. And it has USB, so you can connect it to, uh, to a, a computer. So like Raspberry Pi is what they ship it with. Um, we're, of course, going to be using something more powerful than Raspberry Pi, like an Atomic Pi or Rock Pi, I think, is what we'll end up going with. And then it has the, uh, the LiDAR. This is the Hitachi LG LiDAR. They put a sticker over to cover it up, but it's actually made by um, Hitachi and LG. I think it's called the LG03 something. I don't know. We, we have a skill, a robot skill for it. If we uh, take a look here under skills, navigation. Yeah, here we go. The LDS. That's what it's called. So this will take the data from the LiDAR and it'll push it into the NMS. And the NMS driver, of course, is many of you are familiar with it. It's uh, essentially, it's, it's a uh, communication um, system within ARC that will allow uh, sensors, different types of sensor groups here, to send their data into the NMS and then you can have skills that subscribe to the NMS data and do something with it. So the most popular one that we've been using a lot lately is called the Navigator. And you also have, uh, this is a SLAM robot skill as well. I don't use it a lot. I've used it a few times. I don't really think that SLAM is that great right now. I think there's a lot of limitations with, with SLAM. Uh, so I think the navigator is the way to go. And if we do a full session one day on the T265, I think I'll be able to answer a lot of your questions of, regarding um, what, why I, I, I don't have issues with SLAM and why I think that the navigator is the right solution until we start seeing a better, uh, better option out there. So you can read a little bit about the NMS, but again, this is not a conversation today about that because we're not going to be using the waffle or burger or whatever this thing is. Jeremy's doing some screwing over there like, like a porn star. So I'm going to put this away. And clean up my workspace here because it's pretty messy. We'll just wait a minute for Jeremy to finish up. Okay, he claims he's done making some noise. So today we have a, I have a special beer I'm going to be drinking today during this live hack. This is actually 
Um, well, it's not from my hometown. It's brewed in Guelph, Ontario. But I think the only place you can really buy it is anywhere around my hometown, which is northern Ontario, outside of Thunder Bay. And it's a popular beer there. It's Scottish. For those of you know who know me, know that I'm my mom's side of the family is Scottish. My dad's side is Czechoslovakian. So um, Scottish heritage obviously is something that people never want to let go of. <laughs> so I don't know. There's a lot to it. So this is this is a uh, Scottish beer. It's great. It's my favorite beer. All my friends back home at my cabin they all make fun of me because it's not a. It's a very cheap beer. <laughs> it's, I think it's like two dollars a a beer. And in Canada, that's pretty cheap. I know in America, you can get beer for much cheaper, but you don't have any alcohol in yours, though. So <laughs> that sounds like a you problem, USA. Does the beer make you sound Scottish when you drink it? I can't even do a Scottish accent. <laughs> even if I tried, there's no way. What's like a Scottish word? Haggis. Haggis is a Scottish Haggis. word. Haggis. Yeah. What's a. Donald. Donald is a very Scottish name. Donald, get me some ale. <laughs> get me some ale. Yeah, Jeremy does a much better Scottish <laughs> accent than I do. Okay, let me find my ESP32 cam. It ran away from me someplace. I'll be right back. We had a bunch of them at one point, didn't we? No, I think there was one. No, there was a lot. There was like eight. I found it. I think my I don't remember my grandfather having big issues with Irish people. No, I thought they were enemies. I think there's well you get the highlands, the lowlands, there's a lot of history that um my fam I guess I didn't pay enough attention to it, so I don't I don't know, <laughs> but my mom if she was watching this she'd be like DJ Shares, blah 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 she would tell me Okay, so let's dive into this. This is the SP thirty two cam. I think this is pretty cool. It's a uh, $5 webcam that's Wi-Fi. It's awesome. But it has a bunch of GPIO, and Arc has a firmware for it. So we should be able to uh, have the camera running and servos and use the GPIO at the same time. Now, there's been some issues with people doing that. So tonight, we're going to see if we can solve those issues and find out what's wrong. Now, you may be wondering why there is an Arduino hooked up to here, and that's because we're using the FTDI chip, or the USB to UART converter, on here to program it. This doesn't have a USB port. To make it as small as it is, they got rid of that. Well, they never they didn't get rid of it, they just never put one on. So to program it, you have these two pins right here. And these two pins here is my RX and TX for programming. And then you have a jumper. And you place the jumper between ground and D0, or GPI0. And when you do that, it puts this inside a programming mode. So we'll, we'll dive all into that as I start programming it. So you can use, you don't have to use an Arduino, you can use um, an FTDI or any type of USB to UART converter. So what I'm going to start off with is plugging this into my USB of my laptop. Uh-oh. By doing what I did, stopped my camera from working. Yeah. Okay, so my camera decided it's not going to work. I wonder if I have to... 
Okay, I have a camera again. Yes, yes I do. So, that was interesting. I wasn't able to plug this USB cable into the same USB hub as the camera. So I'm going to have to plug it into a different, a different USB port. There we go. Okay. So all is good. Let's jump into the desktop and load up. Well, I guess first we'll tell you how to get the firmware that we're going to be using. So we'll go to Synthium and click on support and go to compatible easy B hardware and in here you can see all of the the hardware on the side that has its own page or you can read a little bit about the details here and the camera that we're actually talking about is this one called the ESP32 cam so we're going to click on this and we can read about the camera, how to program it, and what I had talked about earlier, the ESP32 camera doesn't have um, USB. Some do and some don't. So you're going to have to Google on how to hook up um, a UART to USB adapter or something to, uh, to program this. So do some Googling and find, it, find out how to wire up and hook it up. But everything else you'll need to program it will be in these instructions here. And at the top of the page, you'll have the actual firmware. So this is firmware version number one. And if we click on the firmware setup instructions, you'll see here this is the details about the firmware. So this is what the Easy B or the ESP32 Easy B Cam will support. So we can download the firmware by clicking on it. And it's going to download a file, which you can extract into a folder. And then you can click on the INO file. Now to program this, you are going to need to install the libraries required for the ESP32. So if we go back to the website and we take a look here at the first instruction of our firmware, it wants us to add this URL to the Arduino IDE under Preferences and inside of here. So this is the additional boards manager. This is what allows you to be able to download libraries to program different boards. So we pasted that, that URL into here. We'll save this. Now if I go to tools and I go to the board manager, it's going to synchronize all of our platforms that are available. And I'll type in ESP32 and we're going to see this one here. SPREF systems 1.04 which is fine. You want to select the version and you want to push the install button and that's going to install the library. And you can see I already have it installed. Next we want to go back to tools and we want to select the COM port for the USB to UART adapter. In this case we're using our Arduino Uno. You want to select the board and the board that we're using is um, the ESP32W Rover module is what we're using. And we have the upload speed set for 115200. The flash frequency set for 40. The flash mode set for QIO. The partition scheme set for huge APP. No debug and again our port we specify and that should be enough. So then we can look through the top of the project here 
and we can see here that there's um, different Wi-Fi modes. So there's a, a client mode. If we uncomment, or if this is commented, it's in a uh, client mode. And if it's uncommented, it's an APP mode. So client mode will allow this to connect to my network. If I uncomment it, then it's going to be APP mode, which means that it's going to use this SSID and this password for me to connect to. So that's what we're going to have it set up for. And the number of ports and things are not really relevant right now, but we're going to dive into that in a bit and figure out how we can get the GPIO to work. So let's program this board. Now to see if it's in programming mode, we'll go to tools and we'll look at the serial monitor. And you can see here that it's trying to connect to an access point. So last time I used this, looks like it's trying to connect to an access, access point. So what I'm going to do is go back to the, uh, to the board itself. And remember we talked about this pin, or this jumper. We want this jumper to go between ground and GPIO zero, which is right there. And now if I push the reset button on the back of the ESP32, and we go back to our desktop, you're going to see that we're ready for the firmware. So now I can push the upload button. And down here in the bottom, we should start seeing the, inform or the uh, firmware being up uploaded. Hey, Baba Dooley, Deli. Um, <clears throat> yes, BV, easy BV5. Yeah, the easy BV5 was, was uh, an easy robot product. Um, that's the easy robot company. They, they had talked about it a while ago. Um, when I was involved with Easy Robot, uh, I don't know if they're focused on doing any more versions of, of their controller. I think the controller is still doing what it does. There's so many controllers in the market right now, and the Arc software has so many different firmwares available that I don't know if there's it makes a lot of sense for an Easy BV5. I think what would be nice is if Easy Robot created a uh, maybe a shield or something for the Atomic Pi or not Atomic Pi, the Rock Pi some sort of little board that didn't have Wi-Fi and didn't have the things that are necessary, but allowed you to plug in a bunch of servos into a, a small little computer. It doesn't have to be a shield either, because if it wasn't a shield, it can be something that can work on any micro or, uh, SBC, single board computer. So a tiny little circuit board with, without the USB, or without, sorry, without the Wi-Fi chip. All it needs is just an STM32, and it can have a built-in serial to UART converter so it'll automatically do the converting, and then it has just a bunch of GPIO. I think that would be great. Maybe even an amplifier, so it can you can plug in audio, and it can amplify it. I don't know. It might be neat. Jeremy's sitting beside me, so he's listening. <laughs> okay, so this is something that happens often. You can see here that it's trying to say connecting, but nothing's happening. I get this often with this ESP32. Um, the only solution I have for this is to unplug my serial to yurt so unplug the board plug it back in and then hitting the reset button again sometimes i have to hit it a few times and then hitting program Come on, you can program, you can do it. Yeah, maybe turn it down a little bit. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of weird. Would you rather royalty free guitar music? Sure, you can try that. It's just I don't know if everybody on the microphone wants to hear this stuff. <laughs> like I'm sure they have their own music playing and their own TV going. Well, it's better for us than sort of silence. Silence. I don't think there ever is any silence when we're doing our live hacks. Okay. 
Um, this is happening again. Yeah, this is it's kind of Arduino for you. It's the way it is. You know, it's open source. You're not paying for it, so it's what you expect, right? Let's try it again. Plug it in. Hit the reset button. And then hit upload. And cross your fingers. <laughs> oh, we got some more progress down here than we had before. It's neat about using the Arduino as a uh, USB to UART converter is you can see the actual data on this little, on these two LEDs here, the TX and RX. And as you can see, there's no flashing because it's not doing anything. Okay, so let's try it again. We might have to shut this down and reload it. Plug this back in. <clears throat> hmm. Press my reset button. And then hit upload. I mean, I guess it is five dollars. If having Craigslist or Kijiji or eBay, where you can buy other people's junk, has taught me anything, is that we're okay to spend five dollars on something that doesn't quite work. <laughs> so that's uh, that's where we're at right now. Just checking to see if everything is configured correctly, but it is. Um, yeah, we're still having issues programming it. It doesn't seem to want to cooperate. This is. Yeah. Oh, I have it on reset. When you hold reset. Yeah. Well, yeah, we can try that. I've I usually get this thing to program every time. Oh. This is yeah, this is the first. Not every time. Sometimes it programs once or twice. So Jeremy suggested taking that chip out. Let's let's try that. I'd rather try anything than sit here and do this all night. <laughs> the fun of live hacks, right? Getting to watch how. How we struggle. Look, we got different, different message down there. So I'm gonna take this chip out. Okay, so now that doesn't have the Arduino chip, even though it was held, held uh, in reset mode. Let's see if this makes a difference. So we'll push a reset button on here, and then the software we will tell it to upload. And while we wait, I'll drink some more beer. Hmm. Yeah, still no. this really is going to be the what we're going to deal with for the next couple minutes. I'm going to stop this. We're going to move on to something else. Cause 
I do. There is into this bin. One of these bins. No, it's inside of a box someplace because I brought it with me to my cabin. Okay, let's try this one more time. If it doesn't work this time, then I have an Arduino that I programmed already in the past for doing um, a USB to UART converter. Babadu says they replaced the EZB V4 to the EZB Mini. I don't think there's an EZB Mini, is there? Oh, IO Tiny? Yeah, the IO Tiny, okay. Yeah, that's but that's Easy Robot. I mean, it's a different company. They they make decisions. They have to make decisions. That's what they do. So, um, is the price the same too? The kit? Yeah, same price, just different controller. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if. Hmm. Yeah, I can't comment on on any, any decisions that they're making. I'm sure it makes sense to them. They do they have two versions? One with the EZB V4 still? No. So DIY customers are kind of. All right. I think most people bought that kit because they wanted to scale to a larger robot. The, the stuff that was in the kit was just a luxury to have servos and things. Huh, I didn't know that. So anyway, let's let's try a different serial to or USB to UART at because this is this is clearly not working. Let's put this chip back in. I don't think it's um our Arduino solution here. I think it's the SP32 is just five dollar piece of crap. <laughs> so it's a little frustrating to work with. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I have another lidar here, and this lidar has a Pro Micro attached to it. And this Pro Micro is um, acting as a USB to serial converter, so we can we can make it do that. But also, I think that this Uno, Uno, no, the Uno doesn't have USB capability, does it, Jer? Right. Okay. So this doesn't this doesn't have multiple URTs, where this one has um, a URT on the I/O, and it can also do serial with the USB. So let's use that instead. Just kind of frustrating because I already had this all wired up. Blah. We'll put this away. Oh, the fun of dealing with open source stuff. What has my life become? And this is the kind of thing that I do on a Friday night. Dealing with other people's shitty open source code. Hey, PTP, what's up, buddy? Did you come to be punished with open source crap as well, like the rest of us here on a Friday night? Because <laughs> that's what we're doing. I just need to find. Uh, 
Ah. I had a cable someplace. I lost it. Oh, well, this will work. Dun, 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 dun. So we're going to have to take this Pro Micro and we're going to have to, hey Will, program this Pro Micro. PTP says ESP32 is 3.3 .3 and Undo FTDI chip is 5 volts. Yeah, is it? Still, doesn't matter. It's 5 volt tolerant. It's because uh, the ESP32 is running an STM, which is 5 volt tolerant, so it's fine. So all the GP all the GPIO on the on the STM are 5 volt tolerant. Um, so let's keep this open, and I do have a project someplace. I think it's under here. Um, USB converter. Here we go. So this is a very simple. USB converter between USB and UART. So I'm going to set to 115200. That's it. And then program it. And of course, the board I'm going to select is going to be a Pro Micro. Well, that works. I don't know if you can see that. Not a Pro Micro. Maybe it will be a Nano or Leonardo. Micro, here it is here. Micro, I think that will work. Perfect. Programmed. That's it. Off we go. Now we just have to connect the ESP32 to this thing and give it some power. So I need some wires, jumper cables. All right, here's some jumpers. Um, I don't know why it has a missing one here. There we go. Will Huff was playing catch up with all his painting he's doing. Are you high right now, Will, from all the paint fumes? <laughs> all right, let's see here. We need to give this thing some power and some TXRX. So I'm pretty sure that the TX, you know, I can't see it with these lights in my eyes. I gotta unplug this. There we go. So TX and RX are down here. And TX is orange. So we'll connect TX to. Where? It's hard to read these pins here. Oh, I should have. It doesn't say. Not like I, you can read very well anyway. <laughs> but I'm going to have to Google and see which pins the ESP32 wants for programming. Oh, there it is. R and T. You can see it here. So T is orange. Is going to connect to R and there. And receive is yellow, which is connect to receive on here. Perfect. Now I gave it some power. So we have ground and five volts. There we are. So ground is going to be gray. Five volts is the other color. So um, let's see on here. VCC and ground. 
That's what we want. VCC and ground. The resolution of this camera, Will, you're not going to like it. I think it's like seven pixels by four pixels. <laughs> no, I, I think it's uh, it's QVGA, right? So what's QVGA? I think it's one, 140 by something. Let's just verify. Let's look through the code. Um, there we go. Q, yeah, Q, QVGA. Let's take a look and see what QVGA is. Jeremy thinks 320. Yeah, there we go. 320 by 240. So it's the same as the Easy Robot camera. It's just um, not as clear and a little bit noisy. Nink, of course, discovered a way how to make it not as noisy by disconnecting the um, the wires going to the urts. But it's still not a very great camera. Um, a lot of it is because I know in the Easy Robot camera and the firmware, we're doing a lot of fanciness with analyzing the picture and everything, but this is just taking the direct raw video feed and throwing it in over the, into a JPEG, I guess. Yeah, throw it into a JPEG with some JPEG compression and then throwing it over the wire. So we have this hooked up. We should be able to give it power and the ESP32 should work. There we go. And let's load up. Our board still, yep, good. And let's put on the serial monitor. Let's just make sure that this thing is talking. So I push the reset button, we should see data in here, which we're not. So the question is, is the RX and TX hooked up backwards? It's usually the first thing to check. Try that again. Hmm. Hmm, interesting. Oh, you know what? This isn't going to work. This is not going to work, guys. You know why? Because every time I tell this to try to program it, <laughs> it's connected to here, and it's going to try to program the actual Arduino on here. We can't turn this into a bypass chip. No, that cannot be done. We need to use an actual FTDI. <laughs> uh, that's too funny. Here I was thinking we could, but of course it doesn't make any sense because every time you hit program on, on here, it's trying to program this. <laughs> oh, I'm so silly. All right, let's see if I can find an FTDI chip. I must have one. Something, remember? Remember I was searching for it, searching for it, and I couldn't find it. You know what? Screw it. We're gonna go back to using the Arduino. I'm sure it's gonna work. It's worked for me for a hundred and something programs or like programming it over the last while because that's the only way I've been doing it. So let's go back to it. 
All right, so our power is um, yellow is ground. So yellow is ground. And Rx and Tx are here. Let's see if we get any datas. No, well, maybe these are backwards. Oh, we have to select the right COM port. There we go. Okay, put these back. Um, let's take a look at the pinouts on this thing again. Five volts on ground. Yeah, that's that's right. Do, 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 do. I'm going to shut this down. Sometimes when you have that open for a long time and you're unplugging and plugging in um, different USB hardware, sometimes Arduino ID gets confused. All right. So programmer, Arduino Uno. Board manager is W Rover, speed 115.2, 40. Yep, this is all what we need. And let's load up our serial monitor. And let's get some data back in here. So we're not seeing any data. I'm just verifying according to our picture here. 5 volts is orange. Yellow is ground. That's correct. And then on this side, our programming. These two. Yeah, right here. So we want TX, which is blue, connected to TX on here. Oh, these are reversed. There we go. TX. Sweet. There we go, now we got our data. Okay, let's try it again. Program. Cross your fingers, everyone, again. Doesn't work. I am going to get another beer. It's crazy because I, when I wrote the firmware for this, um, I was programming it constantly and I had no issue. Well, I had this issue every now and then, but not nearly as much as I'm experiencing right now. You can see here that it's just trying and trying, but, oh, I think it might work. I saw some RX on the light was flashing. Ah, look, it's programming. Yay. The, the stars aligned. Either that or the powers that be didn't want me to have another beer. <laughs> okay, so this is going to put the ESP32 into AP mode. This is going to be my... SSID, which is get off my lawn. Okay, so it's done programming. Now let's go back to our monitor here. And what we'll do is we'll take this jumper and we'll pull the jumper out. Just put it off to the side. And now when we push the reset button, 
we should see some information that our access point is started and everything is ready to rock and roll. So if we load up Arc, oh, time to update. Don't you love this? Just push a button and it automatically updates for you. It's not great. I don't think Jeremy's actually used it yet, though. No. <laughs> you can do a month, can't you? What's the longest you can postpone an update for? I think it's a month. Let's find out. While this goes to install, let's load up another copy of Arc here. Um, six months. Six months. Six months. That's a long time. Can you imagine postponing for six months? Crazy people living on the, the wild side. Will likes the update button. Download. That's it. There is a parameter I can pass to the um, the installer, which will automatically do the installing without having to push any buttons at all. Which I consider doing. I I maybe maybe I'll make it a flag that you can turn on and off. You know, I'm gonna write that down as a note on my phone. There, next release, that's what it'll do. I'll make it so you don't even have to hit any buttons at all. It'll just automatically install. Although I think you still need to hit in Windows, I accept as an administrator to install the program. I think that's something we can't avoid. Will Arc support Linux? I think the question is, why can't Linux support Arc? Right. So the whole mentality and mission behind what we're trying to, what we are doing with, um, with Arc and Synthium is exactly what's listed right here. Our mission is to democratize robots by making robot programming easy and accessible. If you think that using Linux is easy and access, uh, <laughs> if you think using Linux is easy and accessible, then you probably don't need to be using Arc. The fact is, is that Linux, even to get a webcam to work in Linux, or even to connect to a network in Linux, and even just to install it in general, it is an absolute nightmare. And I know because I used to be on the Linux development team years ago. And now I have a few Linux machines running just on Raspberry Pis, but I won't even go near it. The, the trouble with Linux is it's just not an operating system made for people. It's made for servers, and that's one of the reasons why if you ever look for an ROS robot out there, they're very disappointing and they're not doing a lot because they're just not great. It's not a great uh, platform to work with. You spend more time dealing with the operating system and dealing with all of the issues around the operating system than you do actually programming the robot. All right? Let me uh, let me show you something. I'm just doing an update here. Some files. Oh, only six minutes long, that's why. All right, let's take a look at this. So this is a a, a little thing that it's like a little marketing thing that we're using right now to talk about some stuff. So let's ignore let's ignore that. Let's go to this this slide here. So take a look at this. Okay, so this is a non-sustainable engineer-centric product stack. What essentially what this is saying is that when a company, traditionally when a company makes a robot, they choose to develop the entire stack. So they make their own cloud services, 
their own navigation algorithms, their own AI, their own servo drivers, their own controller, their own firmware, their own gate movements. They create all of this. Okay. So when you buy a robot, this right here, this whole thing is what you're paying for as a customer. That's why all these robot companies keep going out of business because the company is trying to justify how to afford to pay for their engineers to maintain this entire code base, this full stack code base. And it's not, it's not sustainable. Like that's the whole issue that we ran in with easy robot, right? With easy robot, we were trying to do the software and we were trying to do the hardware. The only way to make it financially feasible was to charge for the software and you couldn't do both. Also, we needed the software to work with other products. So that's a, a different discussion. But back to what the trouble with other robot companies are and why Linux and ROS and everything that's going on is a huge issue right now is that it's, there is no industry in the world that you can think of where a single company makes the entire stack for that product. And think of what I just said. Imagine a car company had to make their own tires, their own batteries, their own glass, their own metal, their own engines, their own transmissions, their own oil, their own wires, their own speakers, right? You see where I'm getting with this? Their own microcontrollers for the radio, their own operating system for the dashboard, their own seats, their own leather. Like I can go on forever and ever. You can't build a product and a company where you own the entire stack. It's just not feasible financially or through effort. You can't even, there's only 13 or 18 million programmers in the entire world. That's, that's a real accurate number. That's, that's the, the number right now, right? So let's, let's just round up and say there's 20 million programmers. They're all working for mature, evolved industries like Google, Microsoft, Amazon, you know, some small companies that just need some web development, things like that. So it's really hard for companies to afford to build a product like this. And when you throw Linux into the stack and you say this is part of it, and you say this is Linux, well, unfortunately, it doesn't look this, this easy. Linux, right? Fortunately, when that's, when that's happening is now Linux has inside of it, because you want to use webcams, right? You want to use drivers for for camera, for USB. Oh, and you also need to use audio. Suddenly you want to do audio. Well, where's your audio codecs? How do you install them? Oh, sure, people are going to say there's all those open source libraries and everything for Linux. Yeah, there is. But the only way to use it is to open up a command shell, apt get a bunch of stuff if it's on a Raspberry Pi or you know, or, or wherever other package manager there is, hope that it gets there. Then you have to start searching GitHub and searching all these different re repositories to try to figure out how to use it. And then in six months or a month from now, the programmer who gets a real job, it stops supporting it and everything changes, right? So this suddenly goes from a few small things, just how about just general OS maintenance, like op upgrading, things like that, right? How do you do that? How do you upgrade your operating system? How, what if you just want to use a mouse? I just want to use a mouse and I want to have a, have a, have a GUI. All right. so Linux looks fast when it's a command line. You ever tried to load a graphic operating system on a Raspberry Pi? <laughs> like you ever tried to load a web browser on a Raspberry Pi and visit a website? Right. Like these are, the, these are the things that are just not feasible for a product team or for a product. So anyway, I can keep going on and on about this, right? Um, maintenance, um, you know, just general usability. Right? How do you how do you give this to a consumer so that they can actually use it? So anyway, this goes on and on. This is not this is not a feasible business model. So what's the solution? And that's what we're focusing on with Synthium is this up here. This is the function. This is what the robot actually does. Okay, this is the this is the thing that you're actually paying for. This green piece right here. This is what people are actually paying for. When you go to the store and you buy a granola bar, you're not paying for all of this. You're not paying for that granola bar company to have planted the granola seeds, 
you know, watered it, paid, you know, they didn't make their own soil. They didn't do all these things. They sourced it from tons of different industries and they, and they put it all together to create a single product at the end of the day. If the granola bar company were to own the entire infrastructure to develop every single ingredient of that granola bar, it would not be feasible. So really when you break it down to it, this is what consumers are paying for. They're paying for the end function of what the robot does. They should not be charged and have to pay for this part here. In Linux and building robots on very complicated um, full stacks makes businesses non-feasible non and non-sustainable. And the industry is not going to mature. I'm talking about the robot industry. It's not going to mature and grow to be big enough to sustain product development and sales if all robot companies continue with this mentality, thinking that they have to own the entire stack. Robot companies have to stop being nerds and stop thinking it's cool to write all this stuff and start focusing on this, the function, and focusing on the customer. So that's why we made the technology choices we've we've made in order to allow users to have the um, seamless integration of technologies to allow people to just go to a skill store and say sure i would love to try out this intel real sense camera they can click on it they can click to download and install it and they can use it and that's what our, our goal is, to make it so that companies can distribute their technologies and people can use it just by pushing a single button and not having to muck around in an operating system for three weeks to figure out how to get it to work. And Synthium does all of the tough work for you. Right? In order to make the Intel RealSense driver robot skill work in Arc, we had to do all the stuff that you would normally have to do. Again, we do all this part. So Synthium is doing all this. We're, we're taking the burden of, of, of owning the stack for you. So you can focus on this, the function. What does the robot do? And that's why I'm always asking questions in the, in the community forum. If, what would your robot do, guys? You know, what, what is it that robots can do with COVID? We're seeing a lot of telepresence robots. You know, some of our customers are in the medical space and they're doing things with telepresence. Right? So we have enterprise customers that we use ARC for that and Exosphere for that are utilizing the platform so they don't have to make this. Right? Because we're seeing that um, this shift in society right now with COVID and people working from home you think, oh, it's not such a big deal, but I don't know how many of you have parents that are in elderly facilities. Wouldn't you like to see them, interact with them? It's a very difficult thing to do. And if you visit them once a month, shame on you, right? Your parents were there for you every single day of your life. And now you put them in an old folks home and you only see them once a month. You should be there for them every day. So the, the ability to have a telepresence interface with, um, with your parents, with elderly people or with disability people, things like that. That's where we're seeing COVID's really given us a, a wake up call on how we can start utilizing technology for telepresence and for communicating with, you know, with, with people externally. So um, again, you can't build that type of platform and product feasible if you're gonna own the full stack. So would we revisit Linux in the future? I tell you, man, I revisit Linux every week. And not exaggeration, because I have, I don't know if you've seen, a lot of you have seen my collection of computers, <laughs> and my PDP, and, <laughs> and all my old computers and stuff. I'm always in, inside of Unix. I'm always in Linux. I'm always running Linux on my Raspberry Pis. And I'm keeping an eye out for any type of um, developments of user friendliness. And we're seeing attempts at it, right? People get together and they create, uh, there's that Win Linux, which tries to look like Windows, but the look like Windows is still just the look like. You can paint Linux to look like anything you want, but it's still under the hood, it's still Linux. And one of the arguments that I think if Nink, Nink was on this right now, he would argue and say, well, I have a NetBSD my, you know, my, what do you say? He said, my, my young daughter uses a NetBSD tablet. And we were trying to get at is iOS. Well, one of my cars is an ST170, right? It's my old rally car. And 
I can say that that's a uh, Model T, if that's the game we're playing, right? Because it's Ford, it's a Model T, it's got four wheels, it's got an engine, it's got a lot of similarities. The thing is, is that what, I, what happened with OS X and iOS is, sure, it was inspired by BSD, right? Especially with the next operating system. But what, what Steve Jobs had done and what Next had done is they wrote the graphic interface, the windowing manager and everything, into the actual kernel of the operating system. Um, it operates much more like how Windows does, in the sense that you really just can't boot it up without the, the, uh, the display. It's, it's built into it, the graphic operating system. <laughs> so back to where we're at. Let's get back on topic here, because I can talk about this all night. So... Get off my lawn. So we're waiting for a client. So let's connect to the Wi-Fi for get off my lawn. All right. So you can see here now we've uh, we've assigned an IP address of the client. That would be me. Let's connect to Arc or load Arc. And let's add the camera. And we have an IP address for the camera. By default, it should be 192.168.1.1, I'm guessing. Let's see. Switching back to 50.1. All right. So it's going to be 192.168.50.1. Start. Unable to connect. Oh. We have to put the easy B in front of it. Easy B. 192.168.50.1 and then let's turn the resolution start nice there we go so I will give the ESP32 this um, it's a pretty fast camera because the image is so low quality that we're getting some pretty high look at this Oh, that's not good, is it? Hmm. Let's take a look at our frame rate. 26 frames per second. Okay. So, see what's happening here when I do that? Only sometimes it shows up. I know what that is. I know what that is. What that is is the image is not completing its um, JPEG compression, I'm guessing, or it's not completing writing it over the, the Wi-Fi, and the entire image is not being sent. Hmm. Interesting. Look at that. You know how we can tell if that's actually the what's going on? Is let's take let's stop this camera. Let's go into our code. And let's look at the loop for the camera. Here it is here. So here's our loop. And you'll see here that if the camera is connected, blah blah blah. So this is where it runs the camera, which gets the data, and then it writes out the header gets the camera size and then writes the data. So let's do this. Let's put a delay in here. Now how do you delay in in Linux? Is it or sorry in or in, in uh, delay. There we go. Can I steal six PMP transistors from you? Yeah, do I have any? I think so, yeah. Then go for it. So this delay, the number of milliseconds to pause. All right, great. So let's do a delay. Let's delay for 100 milliseconds. That's a long time in computer world. And the reason why we're going to do that is we're going to tell the camera to run, give it some time to do its compression and do all the things it needs to do, and then we'll write out the data. Now this is going to slow our frame rate down to like 10 frames per second because there's 
you know, there's a hundred milliseconds, there's a 10, 100 milliseconds in a, in a second, right? So, uh, so we'll put this back in programming mode here. And then I'll push this button to do the reset. We'll see reset and we'll tell it to program. And then we cross our fingers that we don't deal with that whole issue that we just felt just dealt with earlier when we started this hack before my problems I was having. And come on, you can do it. You can do it. Who knows? Hmm. You can tell when it's going to work because these, like I mentioned, these lights here will start light start flashing. The RX and TX. It's nice having an adjustable lens. Look at that. We can get really close to things. I'm going to put this up Jer's nose. See what makes him tick. It'd be neat. Actually, we should hook up an EZB with a little servo onto this so we can control the the focus from from the computer. All right, anyway, that's a little bit of a stall time because look, it's not programming. Yay, open source. All right. Let's try it again. Program. Do, 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 do. So any, I don't know, there's people watching this stream and I feel so bad for you because you're doing what I'm doing. Friday night, what'd you do Friday night? Yeah, you know, I sat and hung up with DJ and we watched uh, four dots appear in the bottom of his screen over and over again with the word connecting next to it. <laughs> so we did. Why'd you do that? Ah, you know, open source hippies. You know how they don't really care if it works or not. Patchouli. Oh, 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 it's working. Look, it's working. You can see, you can see the, the LEDs flickering. That's what happens when it works, it, they flicker. Do, 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 do. Okay. Seventy percent. You're almost there. You could do it. Come on, bits. Nice. Done. Okay. So back to our Move our pin out of the way, hit our reset button, take a look at our monitor, Wi-Fi is loaded, connect to the Wi-Fi network, get off my lawn! Okay, back to ARC, run the camera. No run camera? Why no run camera? Oh, it didn't, uh, well, this is weird. It says it's connected to two networks here. Synthium it's connected to. Hmms. It says it's connecting to, how are you connecting to both networks? 
Oh, because this one's uh, silly me. This one's Ethernet. This is this is the correct one. There we go. We got an IP address. Let's just make sure we got one. We do. One and two and six eight fifty dot one. Oh. How come we're not getting any camera image? Okay, let's go back to our code. What are we missing here? Delay 100. Maybe that delay is too long and we're timing out. That must be it. I'm going to take a look here again. Arduino delay. Was it in milliseconds? I swear we thought it was, right? Yep, in milliseconds. Good. Nice. All right. So our delay might be too long, guys. We can find that out because we can go to 192.168.50.1 and here, connect. Yeah, so we're connecting fine to the easy B mode. You see? This will allow us to turn, you know, do servos and things, but this is not, it's timing out because we're not getting, oh, look, we got a camera image. I wonder if it just needs a power cycle. I've had this happen sometimes where I programmed it and then um, the camera had, the driver had gone kind of goofy. Yeah, look at that, the message here. Fail to get frame on on time. That's what's going on. And for some reason we're not getting anything inside of here, but that's fine. Get off my lawn. Start. Hmm. It don't like it. Failed to get frame on time. Interesting. So this is too long of a wait. Maybe we should try waiting for 25 milliseconds. That should be good. Even 50 milliseconds, that'll give us quite a bit of time. Let's try that. Because what we're hoping for is we're going to wait for the um, the camera to grab its image and process it before we write out its data to the to the network stream and see if we can get rid of that garbage that was in the bottom of the screen everyone got their toes crossed that it programs Is it possible to cross your toes? I can you can't cross your toes Maybe. try it do it. No? Are you trying? I can cross my big, my little, my little toe next to my big toe. Your second toe over your big toe. Yeah, okay. I thought you were going to say your second toe over your other toe. I'm like, what? That's just weird. Yeah, I can do both, both feet, second toe to the big toe. And I feel like I can do my pinky. Hold on. My baby, my piggy. That's difficult. Oh, I can do the toe next to my baby toe. I can wrap that over my baby, my baby toe. Oh, that's interesting. Can you do that? No. Yeah. My toe, my second toe, huh. from a, I don't know, my fourth toe, let's say. Your fourth toe? It's curved. What? Yeah. You have a curved toe? It's curved like this, yeah. Jeremy's a freak, everyone. <laughs> Let's all laugh and point at Jeremy. 
Go live in your castle, you beast. <laughs> And Martha's the beauty, your wife. <laughs> Bell? The bell of the ball. The bell of the ball. Alright, let's start removing these transistors. Oh, I have a feeling this one's gonna work. It's gonna program. Here we go. Oh no, it started. I think it was Easy Ang. He had an ESP thirty two. PTP. We we programmed it a couple times, bud, but that's about it. And now we're done. I'm ready to give up on this ESP32. Don't do it. Can do it. I just can't comprehend that people buy these things and this is okay for them to deal with. This is, <laughs> which is really weird is somebody made this, right? Someone actually developed this, manufactured it, and they were proud of it. They're like, I'm proud of this. And they come home and their kids jump up on their legs. Daddy, daddy, we love you so much, daddy. You're right, kids, you love me because I made the ESP32. It doesn't always work. But I'm the man of the house. Where's the dog? Need to kick it. The night is still young. PTP, it's a Friday night. What have we done to our lives? What choices have we made in our life? Hey, come on. At least we're here together. Jeremy and, Jeremy and I are here together. Jeremy's making a flower pot with transistors. Making a robotic flower. There's a guy right now who made the SP32. And he's at home and he's watching this YouTube stream. And he's laughing. He's like, I can't believe someone bought one of those things. I made that as a dare. <laughs> he's calling up his buddy. Hey, Billy, guess what? You owe me money. Look at this. Look at this YouTube stream. Someone's trying to actually use that thing I made. Look. Remember the silk screen? It didn't even like, the silk screen didn't even like fit on the circuit board. Remember that? Remember that? We couldn't even like get the ink to, to stick to it and it, the silk screen was all off and yeah. That that product there, yeah. People are actually paying for it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, just to revisit guys, I said to all of you that I was gonna do three things tonight. Okay? So far, I've only been able to program this freaking board three times. <laughs> That's my three things. What I'd love to do is move on from this, but Jeremy won't let me. He wants me to finish this. Hey man, I've made mistakes tonight too. This is not a mistake. Okay, you're right. This is a mistake. It's a mistake that I chose to do this. Oh my gosh. I don't get stressed or upset easy, but this is like kind of pushing my limits. I think the reason why I don't get stressed or upset easily is because I usually walk away from something and <laughs> throw it in the garbage bin out back. Oh, I know what I need. A beer. Baba Deli says he got into robotics because of me. Because of me? No, you didn't get involved in robotics because of me. I'm just some guy. Torture myself trying to use open source stuff. We should set up. But thank you. Thank you very much. That's really nice of you to say. And I do know who Tamagotti uh, Ta 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 Takahashi is. Um, I think he... He was kind of a, a superstar for a while there with robotics. He was doing some pretty neat stuff, right? He made that little robot you can put together. With the, Did he make the one that looks like him? Yeah, he made, he made the robot that looks like him. And he, and he, you're in that uh, 
to remember that documentary that I saw it on years and years ago. I kind of got creeped out by it. Press the easy button, switch to easy mode. <laughs> okay, here we go. It's programmed. So let's go back to at AP mode. There we go. Let's connect to the network. Get off my lawn. We should set up a channel, guys, where we should just uh, buy a bunch of open store stuff and then show how frustrating it is to work with their products. That's really weird. As soon as I put a um, that delay in there for the camera, we're having all these issues. Strange. Is that ever strange? Huh. And you can see the errors that we're getting here. Failed to get camera on time. Oh, I think I'm disconnected from it. I am. Let's try that. Boom. Okay, that's working. Boom. No. So that's interesting. I wonder if the delay function is using a timer that the camera is also using and that's interfering with it. Oh, let me think. Is that ever interesting? I wonder. Hmm. Well, let's find out. Let's uh, let's put this back into programming mode. If that's what we call it. And program it again with our delay gone. And we'll just put it back to the way it was because we knew it worked. It's interesting when I push the program button, I was actually seeing the TX and RX lights come on on here. And then it goes back to where it is right now. That is quite interesting. cry. This is the worst experience ever. Thanks, Jer. Are you sure we had more of these cameras? I feel like we only had that one. I was, I was mistaken. It was a bunch of ESP32s that we had. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Here, this is a FTDI. That's the one. This is the solar botics one, right? This is the one with 
Yeah, okay. Let's try this. Let's try this, everybody. Come on, everybody. <laughs> All right, so um, we're going to go yellow is ground. So yellow is ground. And then plus 5 is V. And then TX is blue. Done. All right, everybody. Let's try this now. Let's see if we can uh, open a serial monitor. Oop, we have to select the COM port first. 15. Open our serial monitor. Push the reset button. And no datas. No datas. No datas at all. Let's um. Maybe it's because I hooked up the ARCs and TX backwards. Try this again. Okay, there. I had to hook that backwards. Have you seen the Raspberry Pi Pico? I have. Everyone's starting to make their own IC now, and the Raspberry Pi is entering the microcontroller market. Yeah, I think I think that the Raspberry Pi as a microcontroller is a neat idea. I don't quite understand why yet. I think it's a lot more power than necessary. I mean, if you can if you can program a Raspberry Pi to do something, you should be able to program a microcontroller to do it. Because they're I.O., right? The I.O. is not very good. But who knows? We'll see what happens with it. It's just underpowered. Is what it all is. All right, here we go. Program. It's underpowered for... Oh, look at that. Programming no problem, Jer. Celebratory beer, I can get a refill. BRBs. Programmed. No, STM32 black pills. Cool. Let's check them out. STM32 blue pill. What do they have them? Arms? STM. So which one's better, the blue or black? Risk core operating at thirty seventy two megahertz. Um, doesn't seem to be. There's a one hundred megahertz version with one hundred twenty eight k of RAM and five hundred twelve k of flash. That's awesome. That is awesome. We should release an EZB firmware for this thing. Cool. Okay. Um, so let's make sure this works first. Babu, let's make sure it works. So if it works without the delay, interesting, no work at all, 50.1, hums. <laughs> it's 
fail to get frame on time. So that's making me wonder if this camera I the camera's having some issues. Yeah, what is the specs of the Raspberry Pi Go? I don't know what happened here, guys, but we broke this thing. How did we break it? I'm bringing you all into this. Let's see. Everything's configured, right? Hmm. Oops. Time to load. Turn arc down. Get back here, arc. What is going on here? Breakfast. What? Did I, did we like, What did we do? The camera does, no, everything feels fine. It doesn't feel hot. We know it's, most of it's working. Jeremy's attacking me with pieces of plastic. I feel violated. They're all ending up in my beer. I'm going to be drinking all this plastic. <laughs> Don't worry. You, you've soldered enough with, with enough lead in your day. To... <laughs> I have a lot of lead in my body. <laughs> we did break it. How did we break the... <laughs> now it doesn't work at all. No, no, it's programming fine. It's oh. it's not it's not. Oh, it's just not working. The camera's not working. Now we just keep getting an error message about about the frame. I don't know if it is. Maybe that's what's wrong. Maybe the camera's loose in there. Let's take a look. Let's take a little look. You see, maybe the camera. Is not sitting in there right. Looks clean.
Okay, let's try this again, ladies and gentlemen. Although there's probably no ladies here, because it's a Friday night, and this is what us nerds do. Um, it's been cold, Pedro. Been cold, like um. Now I don't know if you know Celsius, but you can just load up some Googles if you need to. But we've been getting, on average, minus thirty every day for the last week, Jer. Oh, yeah. Maybe over a week, minus thirty. Um, lockdown in the sense that, like all of our stores are open. Um, everything's been open. The only thing that hasn't been open is restaurants. They just opened up yesterday. But the rule of a restaurant is you have to be um, with your with your family or friends. Oh, the camera's working again. Whoa. Must have been just not sitting in there right. Okay. Yeah, minus 30, Pedro. It's cold. That's why we spend a lot of time inside. So let's see if I can get it to, to ma there we go. There's our, see that? There's too, too much, too many pixels in the JPEG compression is what I'm guessing right there. Now with wind chill, right? Cause only humans or animals feel wind chill. It's been around minus 45. Oh, yeah, that's pretty yeah. My house is having a little bit of an issue though, because, um, I like to keep my humidifier on the furnace cranked. <laughs> so I kind of have like a swimming pool under all my windows. <laughs> so I have to go around every window every single day with a uh, towel and dry that up. I try to keep my house at around 50% humidity. Okay, so we got this working. Let's go back to our code. And let's put our delay back in here and see if we'll delay for 50. It should be a lot more time than necessary. This should give us 20 frames per second, which is going to be pretty good. Um, so let's put this in programming mode. And then make sure we have programming mode. There we go. Upload. And we're not using the Arduino anymore. We're using the FTDI. So. Wow. It works. Jared it works with the FTDI every time. Doesn't like the Arduino. I think he helped out two times because I reseated the camera and that seemed to fix something. Yeah, what's the weather like down there, PTP? Are you, are you guys in lockdown as well, like um, stuck at home and stuff? Not been able to go to restaurants. I don't mind not going to restaurants, though. I'm, I like cooking, eating healthier than than the food at restaurants can give you. Okay, here we go. So we should be getting a maximum of 20 frames per second only. The weather is not cold, but we are expecting a snowstorm. Oh, nice. You're going to be getting the snowstorm that we just had last week. Okay, we're having that same problem. Look at that. Now, that could also be because of the speed in which we're driving the camera. So the camera is at this clock frequency. And our JPEG quality is 12. So the higher the number, the lower the quality. So if I think if I move this to like 15. So we know it's not the JPEG compression. Oh shit, I put this delay in the wrong spot, guys. This delay is supposed to be up here. Okay, let's put our let's put this JPEG compression back. 
you were all supposed to be watching. Telling me I was doing it wrong. Run, delay. Jeremy's sad that you guys aren't watching his, his live stream. Everyone's probably got it on. Right there. Oh, uh, boy. Does that mean if viewers are waiting, does that mean that they're actually watching? I don't think you're streaming. I am streaming. Let's see. This is streaming over here. Oh. Look. It has to be. I don't know what that means then. Oh, no. <laughs> what? You didn't push the start streaming button? This is the preview. I've not gone live. I pushed it before, but it was. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremy hasn't been live on his stream. He's been talking and just partying and giving her, giving her a good time over there. And uh, holy moly, <laughs> stream hasn't. <laughs> I've just gone live after acting for like. Ah, hours. Jeremy. See, I'm the one drinking beer. Jeremy, I should be the one messing up. This is like E.T. and Elliot right now. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I'm E.T. drinking beer and Jeremy's getting drunk. No lockdown, no dining in. Yeah, that's the same as us, PTB. No dining in. That's it, except for yesterday. Yesterday, they're allowing dining in on. Um, oh, Pe Pedro says he was waiting in the other window for you. Oh, thanks, Pedro. He's been like working this whole time. Have you been recording at all? Like, even hit the record button? No, that wasn't even recording. Oh, Jeremy built like a really nice circuit board with, with P and P resistors or transistors. And like, I, I made no mistakes whatsoever, and this had turned out perfectly the first time. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> well, at least you guys are on the other side of me making mistakes, and that works out nicely. <laughs> okay, this is the circuit I built. <laughs> for me, this is like the sixth time I explained it, but for you guys, this is the first time. So, what's going to happen? All right, let's see if this does it again. Here we go. This is the flower. We're going to have a metal bar in the middle here that will be five volts switch. Nope, you see that? We're still getting those. This is the rest of this. Sometimes a computer keyboard does it. Yeah, there we go. Because there's, it can't. The JPEG compressor compressor can't quite do it. So we didn't fix it with that delay. So we got to remove that delay. We wouldn't have used a delay anyway. I would have, I would have done something in code to. The delay was just for a test. Okay. So the next thing we can test here is <laughs> PTP says that he wants to increase the, com the your complexity of your project and add the ESP32 camera to your flower. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, He's using Iowa Tiny, which is just going to work. But think about the ESP32. You can remove the need for the computer. Well, the funny thing is, What's that? the guy who originally built this used an ESP32 for his Oh yeah. Control. And then he connects it to Wi-Fi. Yep. Ah. And he has them, I think, controlled to open up in in time and stuff. Like oh that. yeah. Okay, so um, here's the thing. Are we trying to get I.O. to work? Are we trying to fix that issue with the... Let's just try one more thing. I want to try decreasing the... Let's bring it really high up, the JPEG quality. Jeremy's blaming the button. Red or green 
I don't know, Cynthia's website, every single button is blue, so it's better than pink. Well, no. It used to be purple. used to be pink or purple, whatever color it is, yeah. Not anymore. Put a stop to that. This is nice. It's programming every time now. So don't use the Arduino FTDI as everyone says, because no need. It works better like this. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Looks like an alien, but it's no, it's a cool flower that goes open and closed. That's pretty cool. You don't want to know how long it took me to solder on this. Didn't you just do it last week? No. I did like just these pedals last week. Oh. The rest of it, the, the mechanism, holy moly. It was intense. Yeah. Was the Extreme soldering. Okay, there's our problem. So here's the issue, guys. I think the issue is that the clock frequency of the camera is was too fast for the JPEG compressor compressor to finish its job. Because when I lower the JPEG compressor, it means it's doing less algorithm. And we're not getting that that issue anymore. So we set it for 20, which is way too high. Let's put it for 15. We're just going to tweak it and see what kind of resolution we can get without it getting too, too ugly. Bum, 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 bum. Sweet. All right, let's do it. Let's see if 15 still gives us that noise in the bottom of the camera. Because 12 seemed like a pretty low number for the JPEG compressor, so I would think that it could be kind of noisy if it's trying to run too quick. Yeah, see? I think this is a this is better. Look, we're getting the correct frame rate, twenty seven frames per second. And we're not getting any noise. We can probably so what did we change it to? We made it to fifteen. You wanna try thirteen and then we'll move up if it does it? There we go. Because if this is the case, we can get rid of a lot of that noise. Maybe the person didn't want to, who wrote this, didn't want it to be 13 because it's an unlucky number. Which is tomorrow, the 13th. Dun, dun. Now I wish we ordered dessert, Jer. Yeah. Hey, anyone watching this this stream, do you want to order us some dessert? 
skip the dishes or addresses on the website? I want something with cheesecake. Okay. Reset. Connect. Cross your fingers. If 13 works, then we're done with this part of it, and then we can focus on the GPIO. Oh, nope. Did you see that? There was a flash in there. There it is. So 13 is not a good number. See? JPEG compression, compressor. All right. 14. You think you can do it? I think Jeremy's talking about how hard his his build is right now. I'm just wondering, do you think it, now that you did it once, do you think you do it easier? <clears throat> yeah. Jeremy's gonna be building every single person on the forum. <laughs> Don't even try. <laughs> <laughs> he said he's gonna do it for everyone. Okay. It's his gift. Oh, sorry. Here, you guys can see what I see. Sorry about missing. Wait, everything you just showed them, they couldn't see. It's just... <laughs> no. There's no sound when I go to that. Oh. Okay. That's... Wait, do you have a sound device added to each view? I didn't... Yeah, I have to add it to each view. Oh. See, I think if you don't add a sound device at all, you yeah. it works across everything. Sorry, guys. PTP just said, tell Jeremy is no sound. <laughs> Yeah, he just discovered that, bud. <laughs> oh, this is too funny. Yo. Oh, this is an awesome night. This is exactly what I needed for tonight. All right. Minus, like, not being able to get ESP32 to program for the longest time. Oh, there it is again. Look at that. Urgh! Okay, let's go with 15. I'm getting very good at clicking program on this thing. Okay, um, we're still going to play with this. We're still going to do the GPIO. And then if I have time, we'll dive into this DC to DC converter for the uh, Rock Pi X. Hey, Joe, your rock pie axe isn't here, is it? No? I think you have a rock pie Yeah, but yours, the one you had, has windows on it already, doesn't it? Yours does too. Does it? Oh, okay. Never mind. I thought I'd have to reinstall windows. But no, mine is not here. It's with that. Yeah. Project. Project. What, project? what project were you using with it anyway? I forgot. That's what you're going to use for it? Instead of Astro Boy that you never finished? No. Oh, you give him an atomic pie. It's cheaper and yeah. All right, here we go. Boom. Get off my lawn. All right. Okay. Okay, here we go again. Gosh darn it. To control these new pixels that we got off Amazon. It's crazy you can get the 20 for so 100 new pixels on 
CDs for 20 bucks. Hmm. This. this. So it's only when we have lots of oh, actually, geographic lines, oh, I think. The, so. Little faint traces like some other. Maybe. Maybe it doesn't happen that often, so we should be okay. But, uh, you can step them up really easy. Happens a lot less now with 15, though, right? Over 12 and 13. So let's just keep it at this. So that's going to be our circuit. Yeah, I think, you know what I think I'm going to, Babu, I think I'm going to leave it at, at 15 because I don't want to sacrifice too much video image because it doesn't happen a lot, right? It only happens when there's lots of, uh, lots of straight lines, I think. Yeah, look at it. It's trying to do it there. It's a big one. Oh, wow. It really doesn't like that. Oh, jeez. You know what? What do you guys think that the camera size is? Let's write it out to the... Oh, we can't. Yes, we can. Serial dot print line. Um, print size cam size let's try that print line I'm wondering if maybe the camera image gets too big and maybe it can't reserve enough si enough size inside of the uh, inside the RAM of the chip but I think these chips have quite a bit of RAM I don't think we're gonna Something I could do too is maybe we can look at the camera image size and then adjust the JPEG quality accordingly. So if the image starts getting too big, we can start increasing the JPEG quality. Jeremy's smoking dope. Yeah, you know, you know, those, nobody ever uses those pilots in the middle of the pack. They're never very really useful for anything. I finally found a use. I use those things all the time. Yeah, right, for what? Everything, like <laughs> cooking dinner, making sandwiches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Combing my hair. Making toast, feeding the chickens. No, it's Canadian only. Oh, it's. It's not that great. <laughs> Boston pizza is okay. Right, okay, it's, it's from so let's take a look and see. No. Yeah, it's Boston pizza. So see our image size? When I go like this? Not, oh, look at that. That's our problem, guys. Look at that, Jer. 96, 96, 100 bytes. That's the biggest the image can get. And it can't allocate any more space than that. So they have to put a hard limit on it, a hard stop? Well, I can't put a hard stop on it because it's the size of the image, but what I can do 
we can compress the image. So here's what we'll do. Let's copy this code and put it into a Um, also, let's take a look at the, I think there's some code in here someplace, downloads, nope. for the OVR, CP, OV, this is for the camera driver, I'm wondering if, there's a size of a, um, let's see here. You bet PTP. Thanks for joining, man. We're going to keep playing around and see if we can get this image to work better. There we go. Size of config, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so the, the actual driver itself must have. So if you're going to do a project like this, definitely go to your local. Well, I something that is reserving the size, the max size of the image. Anyway, so here we do. So we have an init camera method, and we'll take this, and this will be the compression. Okay, and then we're going to in it. So we'll make it 12. And we'll have here is we'll make a byte for um, compression. Okay, and then inside of our code here, <coughs> what we'll do is we're going to have an int, um, and we'll call it frame counter. And every time we do a frame count, and then we'll run. And then we'll say if the frame count, we'll do it every, say, 20 frames. <coughs> Um, what we're going to do is send an init camera and then we're going to say if the image size is greater than, we'll say, 700 or 7,000, then we want to increase the compression. And we want compression to be less than 20. Okay. And then else, if compression is greater than zero, and image size is less than, say, 3,000. Compression minus minus. So really, this doesn't need to be zero. I think we'll make it like five to the lowest. OK, can you kind of see what we're doing here? And we only want to send. So we'll go byte prev compression. If prev compression doesn't equal compression, then do that. <coughs> so. Well, every 20 frames, what we're going to do is we're going to, um, here, we'll print out the, 
the compression ratio too. Serial dot print compression. Put a space here, a comma. Perfect. Okay, so what's going to happen here is every 20 frames, we're going to, um, if the compression ratio is less than 20, then what we're going to do is we're going, and, and the image size is greater than 7,000. That means we need to increase the compression ratio. So we're going to um, make the compression ratio go up one. And what just happened here? Why did everything get all goofy? What am I missing? <clears throat> it got really weird, eh? Oh, because there's no semicolon there. There we go. Doesn't explain this, though. Get back over there. What? What is all this all about? Oh. Perfect. There we go. Okay, so if it's greater than 7,000, we're going to increase the compression, which is going to make the image size smaller. And then if the compression ratio is less, still greater than five, but the image size is small, then we're going to lower the compression. So we're going to get a, a sharper image. So really, we're going to be able to keep the image in between 3,000 and 7,000. So kind of can make it eight. Maybe we'll see. We'll try. I feel like seven is the right number, but either way. And then what we'll do is um, we'll reinitialize the camera with the new compression ratio. I don't know if initializing the camera though. You know what? We might want to do this. Um, after we send the data, right here, because I'm not sure if reinitializing the camera, it's, if it's still going to have the buffer, right? It's not going to have this anymore. So we'll do it after, and then we'll do our frame count. Um, right here. There. Okay. So let's program this thing again. So what we're doing is we're dynamically adjusting the compression ratio based upon um, the size of the image. If I spelt compression right, it would compile. This should turn out pretty neat. We should end up with a really um, high resolution image. And we won't let the image get any higher than 96K because it'll, it'll bring it down at 7,000. <clears> or 9.6K, sorry. Okay, boom, reset, and reconnect the Wi-Fi. Okay, let's see what happens here. Okay. Oh, did you see it rebooted? I wonder if we're not allowed to reinitialize the camera like that. Oh, it keeps rebooting. So when we reinitialize the camera, it gets upset. Yeah, look at that. Camera probe error. I2C driver install error. Oh, maybe you can only send initialization to the camera once. So everything we just did, we cannot do. We cannot keep sending an, a reinitialize with 
all of this. So how can we change this this JPEG quality? Hmm. Let's see, is there a function for it here? Initialization. Initialize ESP camera emit. Okay. And what was our error? Camera probe fail. I2C driver install error. I bet you every time you run this, it tries to reinitialize the I2C driver or the I2C interface and that bits the shed. Hmm. Okay. Okay, guys. This I had a good idea, but unless I can figure out how to um, set, maybe there's some. I don't think so. Oh. All right, let's take a look and see. Oh, what is this? We had an issue producing response to your request. GitHub is offline. Weird. All of GitHub. <laughs> How is GitHub down? What's going on there? The got hacked. Someone reboot the internet. No, that seems to work. It's just this one. Oh, but GitHub's back up. All right. Um, so we can save camera settings, load camera settings. What we're looking for is a way to configure the JPEG, like send a command to the camera to configure the, uh, the JPEG compression ratio. But It says here that um, the result is the image data might be missing. This is particularly true if Wi-Fi is enabled. If you need RGB data, it is recommended that the JPEG is captured and then turned into RGB using blah, 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 blah. But that's just a YUV RGB. So this is not JPEG. But we're, we're not running into that problem. We're running into a memory limitation issue. There doesn't seem to be a way to adjust the JPEG quality. Hmm. I want to adjust the JPEG quality programmatically. Let's go ESP32 cam, 9600 bytes. Here we go. Maximum RAM usable is 96. This is not the, it's not what we need. I thought maybe somebody else would have this issue. How about um, ESP32 cam, change JPEG, quality, real time. Oh, here we go. Change the brightness, resolution, quality, contrast, and more. That's what I like to see. Oh, there's a project for this. Oh, look at this. So, to change image settings after initializing the camera. Haha, <laughs> that's what we want, guys. Look at that. Use the following information. So we get the sensor. Okay, so let's go back up to our initialized. Where's our initialize? Here we go. Here we go. Init camera compression. That's fine. 
Um, we'll make this compression, that's fine. So we essentially do the, everything we've already done, except right here. Right here. So we cut the sensor. Let's see, does that build? Is this a command that exists? Yep, it built. So that command does exist. All right, so we can set brightness, contrast, saturation, special effect. Oh, this is really, really neat. I feel like grabbing all of this and putting it inside of a method up here called Actually, we can put it in a camera right there. So people can adjust their own their own values. Cool. So for the time being, what we'll do is we'll comment this out because. Um, sensor, there we go. So edit, comment. There, and we'll put text here. Just say, uncomment to adjust any of these settings. Image settings. There we go. And then we'll say init camera, and then up here, um, <laughs> look into init camera method to adjust any image settings, brightness, contrast, etc. Sweet. So one, um, select the con. Right. Well, now it's, it's at the proper angle. I think it's way too far. Sweet. So there's some instructions to get to get up and running for people. And let's go down to our code where we adjust the there we go. So we care about setting the JPEG compression. Look at all these values. Set brightness, contrast, so special effects. White balance, gain. I think Nink's going to have fun with this. Um, exposure control. Gain control. Gain ceiling. Ooh, you can flip the image and everything. That's neat. Okay. Vertical or vertical flip. There's no horizontal flip. Oh, horizontal mirror. That must be the same thing. So, changing camera settings example. This didn't tell me how to change the JPEG, though. Quality. Oh, it goes 10 to 63. Oh, I didn't know that. 
that went to 20. So we can change this number here from 20 to 60. That seems pretty low. <laughs> I wonder what this FB count is. Look at this. X frame UXGA or SVGA. I wonder if we can... Uh, I don't know. I have trouble thinking that we can increase the, the size. Maybe we can decrease our buffer size here. Make this... Eight. I wonder if maybe we're just using too much RAM in the the firmware and not leaving enough memory for doing a uh, reserving some memory uh, reserve memory call. So let's try this. But I still don't see how we can change the JPEG quality. Here we go. Image format and quality. No. I want to do it programmatically, like in real time. Okay, it doesn't seem like there's a way to do it. Oh man, I just wasted a whole bunch of time. Okay, um, so everything I just did doesn't seem like it's going to work. So let's just comment this out for the time being. And it doesn't look like we're able to adjust the JPEG compression. That being said, our JPEG compression is 12. So it goes out of 63, so really making it 20 shouldn't be that big of a difference. So let's try it. It's funny how we were originally just supposed to get some servo I.O. ports to work. Instead we spent this whole time playing with the camera because the camera is given tons of artifacts all over the place. And I can't have that. I think that that's just a European thing, yeah. in general. Mm, I'm a little no, I said, come over here, laddie. laddie no. Oh. Right, 
Good lad. Whoa! Cheryl lad. When someone says good lad, right? Apparently, when you type in lad, you get a bunch of, you get a girl in a bikini. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, and what's our image look like? Oh, our camera is not getting anywhere near. All right. So twenty. So if we can't adjust the JPEG quality in real time. At least doing so like this helps. Now the JPEG quality is not as great. But at least we're not getting, at least we're getting a full image, right? <laughs> I mean, would you rather have a partial image in higher quality or? <laughs> okay, so let's make it 18. I feel like this is the last time I'm going to I'm going to check it because I think like eight, if 18 works, then we're good. <clears throat> and then I'm going to see if I can play with the servo, servo ports. Um, what's the best way to do that? I think I have, I think I have an LED on it somewhere. Do. There we go. I have an LED on a on a wire, so I can hook up this to each pin, and we can see which I/O is what, and we can map it correctly. And once we have it mapped, then we should be able to turn on different servos and see if we can get um, the camera to work with the servos. <laughs> that didn't work. I'm just going to leave it at 20. We know 20 worked. There we go. 20 is our number. So we can take this away, take frame count away, take this away, go to our init, get rid of our compression, make this number a 20. Get rid of all this. It would have been neat if we could have adjusted the, the quality in real time. That would have been super awesome. But unfortunately, none of those parameters that we were looking at are useful to us for that. Right? We have everything except for... Let's look at sensor T. Maybe there's something in here that we didn't. Oh, set quality. Shut up. He left it out. <sighs> okay, we're putting it all back, everybody. Putting that back. There we go. Putting that back. Okay. Putting that back. Okay. Oh my gosh, how frustrating is that? Uncomment this again. And let's check something before we go any further. This is S. All 
And according to this, we have set quality. Okay, let's take a look and see. Oops, set quality. So this is where we were, where he says, you can set the quality, blah, blah, blah. And nowhere in there is the word set quality. Okay. How about this one? Set quality. Oops. No. Hmm. right here set quality well let's you oh it's set underscore quality oh well either way nobody was using it but we sure will set underscore quality compression check that out and do I have to do anything after I don't think so right like I don't have to send any no nope, that's it Set quality, nice. So every 20 frames, we will check if our image is, if it's bigger than 7,000 and less than 60, we'll start increasing the compression. If the uh, image size is less than 3,000, then we'll start decreasing the quality or sorry, sorry, increasing the quality. Maybe four. So we're gonna. What's gonna happen is we're gonna using this. It's gonna keep a three thousand byte difference. Oops, what's going on here? Three thousand byte difference between high and low, and having to move the quality. And if the compression changes, then we run this and we set the quality to the compression ratio. That's it. So. Dynamically, we will be adjusting the quality of the image so that we're not having to hard code a single quality. So you don't have to live with a single quality. You can, it'll change based upon whatever you're using it for. What? Conversion bike to unsigned car? What? Where am I here? Doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, we don't want this one. Oh! Yes, they're passing in S. Passing in itself. Boom. Let's test it out. Check it out. 
Check it out. It's working. See our quality is going up. It's going down. So what's happening is the compression value is going to keep going up <clears throat> while the image has a lot of detail to it. There, see the compression went to 33 because of the amount of detail in the image. But if I point it out over here at this whiteboard, you can see the compression ratio is going down now. See how it's counting down? So the image is going to start getting, if we go like this, you're going to notice the image is going to start getting clearer and clearer. Okay, so 4,000 seems to be too high of a number. I think we can bring this to... Five, six thousand? No, five thousand. So this this one here is um, decrease quality, increase quality. All right, just because <laughs> I know it's it looks weird because it's a plus plus and a minus one. So what's happening is when the image is less than 5,000, it starts increasing the quality. Yeah. We can probably make this 10 frames. That way you don't experience as many artifacts. Okay. <clears throat> cool. The ESP32 is now becoming sentient. It will automatically adjust its its uh, JPEG quality based upon the size of the image. Nice. Yeah. So we should you should get a higher quality image. Maybe this is wrong. This should be 8,000. This should be 8,000. And this should be 7,000. Just thinking out loud here. Because really we just care about... Because we want the quality to be higher. Yeah, we might even every 10 frames. So this will be twice, essentially this will be twice a second at this frame rate. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna reset this and program it again with these new values we just did. Eight thousand and seven thousand. No, it doesn't seem like a lot, but the difference of only a one k. But I'm okay with the compression constantly changing. That's gonna be okay. Makes me even think that this frame count value can be even smaller, like maybe like a five. So it can adjust it can adjust quicker to the new frame rate. Or the new compression ratio. Yeah, you know, I think five is a better number. Cause I'm just wondering if I even want it to be a smaller number, like every second frame. Ah, let's try it like this.
sweet. Oh, nice. Okay, look at this chair. Look how sharp the image starts getting. See how sharp the image starts getting? And if I put lots of noise in front of it like this, it gets really crappy and then it instantly starts fixing itself. But it will get a little bit blurrier. So I go to here and see how blurry it is and it starts slowly getting sharper and sharper because it's adjusting the size. So if I go to here, you'll see the image size goes down if I go to here, see how small the image is, and then the image starts getting bigger and bigger. Cool. Yeah, this is wonderful. Now that flicker where it changes to those two different resolutions, we can get rid of that by going to two frames. So every second frame, adjust the compression. I mean, there's no reason why not, right? Who cares how many times adjust the compression? Really, we can probably remove a frame count altogether and adjust it in real time. It doesn't seem, let's see, are we noticing any, are we noticing any frame? Like a drop in frame rate when we do this? No, we're not. So let's try with every second frame and see what that looks like and see if we end up with a uh, anything behaving kind of weird. I don't think we will. Program. All right. Frame rate's not changing. Oh, this is wonderful. quickly that recovers from hmm I think is when we adjust the see what happens when we adjust the flint frame rate you see that flicker Not the frame rate, sorry. When you adjust the compression, you see that flicker that's occurring? That's why we don't want to do it as fast as we're doing it, because it flickers. Okay, we'll put it back to 10. We won't experience as much of a flicker.
Wait. Okay, let's try to find. We should be able to connect to the 192.168.1.50.1. We should be able to connect to the EZB now. Let's save this project. Test DSP. And let's add a script. And we'll do a digital dot um, set d0 true. Sleep for half a second. Set it for false. Sleep for half a second. Oops. There. Save this. Okay. So the question that I have is we created this translate digital port here. So if we look at the ESP32 on our website, um, Not skills here. There's the pinouts. Okay, so zero, pin zero. Um, so that's three volts. So where's our ground? Ground is here. So this is three volts. We should be able to. This should light up the LED. No. This should light up the LED. There we go. So the LED is lit up. So that's because we're giving it three volts. So this will be pin zero. So zero in our code is sixteen. I'm going to make this D16. What happened to our camera? There we go. Oh. 16 is not making that flash. Wonder why. Well, I have an idea anyway. Let's go in our loop here, or setup, I mean, before we even initialize anything here. Um, we'll just do this. We'll just say on an Arduino. How do you tell it you want it to be an output? So digital write writes the output. That doesn't look right. These shouldn't be there. There it is, pin mode. Zero. So this will go in between. We'll start at the top. Zero.
There. So we're just going to try and see if we can flash this one LED without doing it through uh, any code in EZB. We'll just do it directly from here. Um, but maybe I don't want to do zero. Let's try. Let's take a look. Let's do 16. Apparently 16 is already on. Let's make sure that 16 is not being used for the camera. Where did we see that? I think it was in here. There we go. Um, AI Tinker, here we go. 16 is not being used. We're using 32, 0, 26, 35, 19, 18. Okay, so I'm not using pin 16. Good. Sweet. So we'll make this 16. And we should be flashing 16. I have no snacks. I got nothing, Jer. No. I'm peckish. Are you not peckish? Uh, okay. You're peckish. You're always peckish. I wish I had an alcoholic drink or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Jer, you had such a fun night. <laughs> All right. We're not flashing this LED. All right, so that's Pin 16. GAPO 16. So what does 16 relate to? What does it map to in Arduino? It's not connecting to here. So... Let's just make sure that this is what's happening. Just for fun. We can check the serial monitor. Um, boom, boom. Hey, Graham. What a weirdo. What are you doing, Graham? Yeah. All right. Let's see. I don't think my brother subscribed. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe he does. All right. Boom. Okay, let's try this again. See, I felt pretty bad. Of course you subscribed. You know what's funny is we were joking earlier when there's a bunch of people on here about how it's a Friday night and we're playing with robots and being nerds. But I don't feel so bad because it's only 11.30 here and it's 1.30 there, so you don't have any excuse. <laughs> okay, let's try resetting this. Let's take a look at our... So this doesn't make any sense. Why would they don't have uh, proper mapping? Right? So GPIO 16, what's it mapped to in Arduino? Definitely not 16. Uh, let's do some searches.
Oh, my brother and I mama joke all the time. Oh, yeah. He's always like, it's your mom too. <laughs> nice. Arduino. He's bragging about going for ski doing tomorrow. Oh, lucky guy. How cold is it? <laughs> See you, bud. Love you. Um, in Thunder Bay? Yeah. I think it's cold, but I think tomorrow's supposed to warm up. Minus 19 there tomorrow. Have fun sledding in minus 19. You're hardcore. I'll come, I'll come sledding next weekend when it's minus 4. How's that sound? <laughs> Let's see here. I'll get rid of the word pin. You were out when it was minus 30? You're mental. Mental. No, it's new snowmobiles don't break down. You're thinking of like those old ones with like the big yellow fronts and <laughs> yeah, the old skidoos. Who'd you ride with? Did you go with Brad and your boss? Okay, GPO is zero. Okay, so it's telling me that GPO four is the built-in flashlight. So I should be able to... You went, oh, the cam's frozen. Nice. Is Lake, can you go out onto Lake Superior from the mouth of the cam? Probably not, eh? Because like how far in the cam can you go? Because don't they keep uh, up to the bridge? Um, don't they tug up to the bridge? Be careful, man. You might have to do some swimming if you if you get to the mouth of the cam and it looks like it's frozen. I'm busy. No text answering. I'm busy. See you, buddy. No. Ice skating? Ice, where, which one is Lake Mountain Wonka? Is that the one that's east when you turn right when you get to Banff? I was there last week. <laughs> I was walking out on Lake Min Minnewanka, and it, it was frozen, like, at least a foot. It was uh, near the center, I think. Oh, they were in the center? Yeah, I don't think it freezes that, like, that far out. There was some people there that didn't look like they really understood nature when I was there. <laughs> the, yeah, there were a lot of tourists. I was pretty surprised about that. I'll send AJ's birthday video. Okay, good night, bud. Okay, GPA of four should be the the LED. So let's try and see if that does it. So this should be the built-in LED. So we should not have any issues there. Okay, what is this guy saying? One of our readers shares that if you initialize the micro SD card, you won't have this problem. GPO is also connected to micro SD cards. You may have troubles when trying to, to use both at the same time. The light will come on. Well, that's fine. I don't need to use. GPIO 33 is a built in red LED. Pin mode 33 output. Oh, low and high it uses, not true and false. Wait, is low and high the same as true and false? Must be. Okay. Let's 
33, eh? Oh! That's working. Okay. Don't look at that in the eyes. Holy crap, that's bright. 33. And then f Oops, sorry, not 33. 4, right? Four. Thirty-three is the red LED. Let's make sure that one works. What does playbacks mean? Number of people like watched your stream since you started. I think so. Must be. Yeah, I think so. And start it all over. All right, here we go again. Oh, there's my red LED flashing. You can see it. All right, so that's good. Okay, so if what it's saying is true, that GPIO 33 and GPIO 4 is the LEDs, then... Oh, look at this. The oh, this is the camera, this is here. So five... We look here. Maybe these are not the right numbers. No, that looks like the right numbers to me. I mean, when I look at the silk screen on here, I'm I'm pretty sure that I'm seeing. Yeah. I like that I can zoom in this much, eh? With these? Yeah. It's definitely 16, and it's definitely a zero. And over here, it's a four. Two, fourteen, fifteen, thirteen, twelve, and ground. Okay. So I'm pretty confident that what we're seeing in the, on the silk screen is the same as we're seeing here. So why I'm not able to, to get those other ones to work is beyond me. So maybe what we'll do is we'll keep trying different pins and see what happens. Okay, so we know that, let's try 12. So we'll go ground to 12. Just way over here. Whoa. Twelve. 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 There we go. program.
My brother probably doesn't realize. Uh, do I program in assembly language? Yeah, I don't very often anymore because it's kind of um, ridiculous to. <laughs> so the only time I ever do is if I'm working on a certain microcontroller and I notice the compiler is doing something weird. Uh, like sometimes the compiler will be doing unnecessary steps to convert a port or something, in which case I will, uh, I'll wrap that command in an assembly and talk directly to it. But most cases I don't. Oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah, lots of knobs. GMPs? No. One instruction. Nops, just do, do nothing whatsoever. Okay, so we're flashing an LED. That's good news. Okay, so what it's telling me, and from what's different from using the SP32, is that I don't need this translator code here. And I don't know which ports can be ADC. He doesn't say any of these can be ADC. So maybe what I'll do is I'll make this one 12, 13, just for fun, 15, 14, 2, and 4. And anything else will default to 12. So maybe these can double as ADCs, you never know. But either way, let's get rid of this whole translate in here altogether. Delete all of it. Boom. And we'll call this arc. Okay, so now we should get an error message when I try to compile. There we go. We don't need this translate anymore. What's this set pin mode do? Oh, it translates as well. Here too. And here. And here. When you say writing firmware, it means it is communicating layer from hardware to arc. Exactly. So what we're doing right now is writing firmware, actually. It's uh, exactly that. So sometimes the firmware can have, um, hey Perry, what's going on buddy? We are working with the ESP32 camera. Okay, set pin mode, digital port. Analog, here we go. I don't know if we can do analog reads on those pins. I guess we'll find out. Perry, have you seen the OpenAI robot skill that published, but it's still in beta? You talk about op doing... Um, personality chats and chatbot stuff. You just wait till you see that thing come out. It's gonna be pretty wild, except it's not programmable because it's all AI based, but it's pretty pretty awesome. I'm looking forward to, hopefully we'll be able to launch it soon. We have to go through a review process with them. Uh, why am 
am I having trouble seeing which one this connects to here? Because it's on the wrong side, that's why. There we go. Okay, 33 flash is red. And four is the flash. So this is not going to translate any of the ports at all. So we should just talk directly to them. So whatever, specify an arc. Oh, you know what we forgot? I forgot to remove. Is this <laughs> the beginning here? All this has to go. I got to program it again. Bum, 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 bum. This will be a pretty cool firmware when it's done. Yeah, it's pretty cheap, that's for sure. And because you can program yourself, you can take the EZB firmware, this firmware, and you can add your own stuff to it. Control some servos, make, make a bunch of different things happen. Yeah, without even a computer. All right, here we go. Let's jump back into ARC. And does our camera work? Oh, I have to connect to the EZB. There it is. And camera. Camera's working. Yes. That's right. Awesome. Okay, now let's see if we can flash the LED. Um, I said four, right? There we go. Whoa. So we can turn the flash on. That's cool. Now let's see if we can turn on and off one of these ports. So according to this manual, I have it plugged into 12, number 12. So if I were to go back to our code here, let's do 12, 12, let's run it. Yeah, it's working. Cool. So the GPIOs are mapping correctly without us having to do a map function. Now let's see if we can actually get a servo to work. Let's put the servo on 12. And let's set it for one degree. Sleep for half a second. Set it for 180 degrees. Sleep for half a second. And loop. All right, let's run this. See that flicker? That flicker is good news. But look at the camera stopped working. 
That's exactly what Nink told me happens. And now the camera won't run again at all. So we can cycle the power for the camera. So what are you saying seems to be accurate. The servo and the camera seem to somehow interfere with themselves. So when I connect to the to here, and as soon as I tell it to do anything to do with the servo, here we go, the camera locks up. Now we told it to use port number 12. And I'm pretty certain that 12 is not one of the ports that the camera was even using. Let's take a look. AI Tinker. There it is, AI Tinker. And I don't see 12 in this list. Now, I do see LEDC timer. Ah, oh, interesting. It is using timer one. That is interesting. If you were making a ball tracker robot that is going to use a camera and arc, then the image feed is given to arc, then arc calculates where the ball in the image is, and finally it sends a movement to the robot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just like any robot. Any robot takes the image. Arc can be on the robot. It can be um, anywhere, really. It doesn't have to be over Wi-Fi. We have actually the easiest the easiest way to track a, a ball with with uh, with arc is just to go in the camera config and then turn movement tracking on like this and turn on um, dynamic speed. I like dynamic speed; it's nice. I click save and then uh, select your color for your ball, and that's it. You don't have to write any code or anything. It just there's lots of videos like if you look at um, Let's see, we, uh, Roomba. Uh, movement panels, iRobot movement, this one here. We got a video, this is Kate. So all we did was we, ta we taught the, the, we told the room, here I'll turn it down. So we told her, we told the um, the camera control, and we taught it the color of her socks. And all we did was tell the, we just turned that one switch on. That's all we had to do. You can see here in the, on the screen, you can see it's highlighting her feet. So it's automatically tracking it. So a ball tracking robot is not any code. It's really about four mouse clicks. It's pretty basic stuff. And the wider the camera lens you have as well, then it'll get it better. You won't have to be as close to the robot. Um, I feel like there's a bunch of other ones too that I've done that with, right? Like, let's look under some of the robots I've made here. Uh, let's see here. I'm pretty sure I have a lot of robots that I've walked through a little tutorial on how to track a ball. Here we go. Rolly tracing a ball. Adventure bot chasing a ball. <laughs> These are all pretty basic stuff. It's 
It's kind of cute actually watching him just drive and chase the ball around. <laughs> Forgot about this video. Yeah, exactly, Babu. It's exactly how we're doing it. Mm -hmm. Ha, pretty neat. Okay, back on topic here. So we notice that as soon as we connect, we tell the servo to move, it's crashing um, the camera. And if we looked in the code, we notice it's using timer two. So let's take a look at the this is, this is a library that um, everyone's using to control the servos with ESP32. Let's see if they talk about what timer they're using here. Timer. So here we go here. An ESP32 timer. Let's read this. Um, timers allow us to set the timer with a max of 20 bits, thus timer tick and length, timer twitch, equation for the blah blah blah, okay, yes, but what timer are you using here? Let's find out. doesn't say what timer it's using. I bet you that's inside of the header file here. Oh, look at this. LED channel group channel mapping. That might be it. And let's take a look at our file in here again. I think it said timer one, right? AI thinker timer one. They're all using, oh, this is using timer zero channel zero. Timer one, channel one, zero, zero. Okay, based upon the type of camera, different timers are being used. And see, this is using zero, zero. Um, I'm not sure, but I am, I am guessing that we're gonna we're going to find out that uh, the timers are being a conflict here. Hmm. LED chan to group channel timer. So where is it actually doing this? Is it in the PWM channel? It must be. Must be, must be, must be, must be. Here we go. Here it is here. I don't think we saw any error messages in here, right? Nope. Oh, we can get rid of this compression, all this data being written out to the 
That doesn't need to be there anymore. All this stuff here. Get rid of all this. Boom. Oops. Okay. So, I just got to read about this code here that it's trying to do first. Um, so, get timer. Timer index. If PWM channel here goes a channel. If the channel is being used. Here we go here. Timer and then index the channel. It's easier to read, right? Okay. So what we have to do is we have to find this function. There it is here. So what this function is doing is timer num index So why is time? Do you think if we change this to zero, the camera will still work? Let's find out. Let's find out. Program this again, but this time we're using channel zero. Instead of one, and we'll see if, because I think, because Nink says that there's some people using servos in the camera at the same time, and I'm guessing they're using this one, this dev board, and some clones. What we're using is the AI Tinker. And it seems that they have a very different configuration. But the timer might be hooked up to these pins. And that's why it's using timer 0 versus timer 1. So this something tells me it's not going to work. And then we're going to have to dive into this ESP32, dive into this code here, and see if we can not use timer 1 channel 0 or timer one, channel one, whatever it was using. All right, here we go. Let's find out what's going on. Oh, camera worked. All right then, let's try using a servo. Oop. Connect to it. No, it still didn't work. Susan, I try using a servo. Ooh, and it all locked up entirely. Look at that. What kind of message did we get? Oh, it rebooted. She rebooted. So, or maybe didn't. Nope, just locked up entirely. We had a little fun tonight, making mistakes, laughing ourselves. Okay, let's try it again. Doing our best to create this robot flower project. It's almost there, but it's going to require some more labor. It seems to still be working. Uh, yeah, so 
but the camera's dead. Okay, we're gonna have to revisit this another day because I think I'm done for the day right now. Jeremy's shutting his his down, so I'm gonna shut my stream down too. And I'll revisit this another day and maybe do some Google searches. Hmm. But I'll publish this firmware anyway because it does have uh, a bunch of fixes to the digital I.O. by not doing a translation. And we also have like this awesome um, compression, dynamic compression ratio on the image. So I think that's great. And you can also adjust colors and all that kind of stuff. Sweet. Okay, guys. I'm shutting her down. I'll see you later. Okay. Bye-bye.